my name is Keshwani. That's K-E-S-H-W-A-N-I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. We are done solving almost all the problems from this book. If there is any problem at all that gives you trouble, and if you're inter interested in watching the solutions to the problem, you will find the solutions from day number 251 through 400. From 251 through 400, this book happens to contain exactly the same problems in vast majority of the cases, and in most cases, appearing on exactly the same page numbers as the ones that appeared in this book, the first edition of the revised GRE. In the event that you are interested in watching the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. Right now, we are in the process of solving some quantitative comparison question, quantitative comparison questions from this book right here, the 10th edition of the general GRE. Quantitative comparison questions are very important questions. They are still a big chunk of the exam. Unfortunately, the revised GRE first and second edition do not provide us enough, enough questions for practice. So to, to, to get some more practice on these questions from day number 401, we began solving questions from this book. And right now, we are on page number 265. Please turn to it, page number 265, problem number 7. Problem number 7, when it appeared in the exam, three quarters of the people had no problem with it. 76% of the people got it right. Here is what the problem says. It's a geometry question. We're given a picture here. We're given a picture that looks like this. We have a right angle triangle here. P, Q, R. We are told that this is 13. And then we have another triangle that looks like this, which we are told is also a right angle, which is also a right angle triangle. Oh, that that this this word is here. This word is here. They have not given it any any name here. In the book, they do not give it a name. We're going to we're going to christen it. Let's call it S P Q R S. In the exam, it does not have a name. Anyway, to uh, to make the very long story short, this side is three. Q to S is three. S the R is four. And what we are being asked to compare is the area, or rather, not the area. The perimeter of triangle. PQR, PQR, the perimeter of triangle PQR versus 36. One more time. 36 versus the perimeter of PQR. I'm going to be quiet now. I'm going to give you a few seconds to pause and unpause the video. Do it yourself and then we'll compare the work. Do you understand? All right, here we go. The first triangle. The small triangle QRS, the small triangle QRS is a very straightforward triangle because it's a 3, 4, 5 triangle. We got a 3 here, we got a 4 here. The side facing the, the, side facing the right angle is the hypotenuse, which is going to be 5. It's a straightforward 3, 4, 5 triangle. So that side is 5. What about this side? P through R. We could actually sit there and figure out what it is. But in reality, we do not, we do not have to because these questions, always remember, these questions are called quantitative comparison which is why we write down the word computation and we cross it out for emphasis. Nobody is asking us to actually figure out the perimeter. No, they are not asking us. The question here is not what is the perimeter of this triangle. That is not the question here. The question is, is the perimeter of the triangle PQR less than, equal to, or more than 36? And if you can answer that question, that's all, that's all that counts. This is 13 and this is right angle. This is right, this is here, right angle, right angle here, which means the side PQ PQ is the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse has to be the longest side in the triangle, in any right angle triangle. Hypotenuse has to be the longest side. So P to R, we don't know what it is, but whatever the hell it is, it's less than 13. It's got to be less than 13. This is how we write less than 13. So the perimeter of this thing is, the perimeter of this thing is 13 plus something less than 13 plus 5. 13 plus 13 is 26. 26 plus 5 is 26 plus 5 would be 31. So the parameter of this whole thing, whatever it is, is less than 31. 
So we've been asked to compare a quantity that is less than 31 versus 36. Obviously, the answer is B. Do you understand? That's all. We're done. Go to the next one, number 8. The reason we are making so much fuss about it is that you have to get used to doing something like this. Here, of course, it was not a big deal. It was not a big deal because, of course, you recognize right away that it's a 5, 12, 13 triangle. It wasn't a big deal. I realize that I'm fully cognizant of the fact. I'm fully cognizant of the fact that this thing is 5 and this thing is 13, so this thing has to be 12. That wasn't the bloody point. We could have actually put here 12, but I want you to get to you. I want you to get used to the idea that you don't actually have to figure out what that quantity is. If the numbers are cumbersome, you don't actually have to calculate it. Instead of 13, instead of 13, had they put down 15 here, we wouldn't have wasted our time doing any work. We know that this is less than 15. That's all. And the answer still would not change. Answer still would not change because this will be less than 15, this will be less than 33, and the answer would still be B. But had it been 15, I don't want you to sit there and waste your time trying to figure out what the side needs to be. It's not necessary, do you understand? Number eight. We were, fully cognizant, we were fully cognizant of the fact that the missing side was 12 because it's a 5, 12, 13 triangle. What does cognizant mean? Did we ever learn the word? Of course we did. On day number 3. Vocabulary. Day 3. If you're interested in improving your vocabulary, just type in GRE vocabulary words. Day 3 and learn the word. Cognizant means to be aware of something, to have knowledge of something, to know something. Of course, we were aware of the fact that it was a 5, 12, 13 triangle. But in the event, if it were in the event that it weren't, like 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 we changed the numbers here, we wouldn't sit there and try to waste our uh, waste our precious second trying to figure out the exact length of the side. It's not necessary. Do you understand? Let's do number eight. Number eight, we are told that x is more than y, and we are told that y is more than w, and we are told that w is more than zero. In other words, they are all positive, and we're being asked to compare x times y over w versus y times w over x. Go ahead and do it yourself. No matter how simple the problem is, when I tell you to pause the video and do it yourself, there is a reason for it. Once you, saw the, once you see the solution, it's too late now. You cannot uh, un un undo. Uh, do it yourself first. You will get something out of it. And then unpause the video and then compare the work. Here we go then. First thing first, here we have x times y over w, here we have y times w over x. We see a y here, we see a y here. Why don't we divide both sides of the equation by y? Why don't we divide both sides of the equation by y? And if you do that, y drops out, y drops out. And of course, in the real exam, in the real exam, we wouldn't do it in such a babyish way. We wouldn't do it in a babyish way. Just do it like a grown-up person. We're going to do it again. We're going to do it like a grown-up person, not like a baby. Y times W over X. Y times W over X. And X times Y over W. Divide both, both, both columns by Y. Y drops out. And then what do you notice? We know that X, we are told, is more than W. X is more than W. X, we know, is more than W. So the top it's more than the bottom, which means this quantity, which means this fraction that we have here, x, x over w, since we know that x is more than w, right here, x is more than w, therefore since the top is more than the bottom, this has to be more than 1. Here we know that w over x is what we have, and w, and w we know, w we know, is less than x. w we know is less than x, because x is more than w. But anyway, you get the idea. And therefore, this is less than 1. This is less than 1. That's it, you're done. This is more than 1, this is less than 1, the answer is A. Number 9. Number 9. Number 9. 
Oh, number eight, I did not give you the percentile, did I? Number eight that we just finished, number eight that we just finished was 74%. Number nine, what we're about to do is 60%. Two fifths of the people missed it. Here it is. Four plus two times root two versus two plus four times root two. Column A, column B. I'm going to stop now for five seconds. Pause the video, solve it yourself, and then you know the routine. All right, here we go. I see a 4 here, we see a 2 here. Why don't we subtract 2 from both sides? Subtract 2 from both sides. The 2 is going to drop out, and this is going to become 2. We see 2 root 2 here, we see 4 root 2 here. Why don't we subtract 2 root 2 from both sides? Subtract 2 root 2 from both sides. Keep in mind that this is column A and this is column B. Don't mix up the two. When we subtract 2 root 2, 2 times root 2 and 2 times root 2 from both columns, 2 root 2, positive 2 root 2 and a negative 2 root 2 is going to drop out. And here we have 4 root 2 and minus 2 root 2. If we have, think of root 2, think of root 2 as x. So we have 4x minus 2x. Think of x is our 2 root 2. So we have 4 2 root 2 minus 2 root 2. 4x minus 2x is 2x. This is just 2 root 2. And since root 2, since we know that since root 2 is more than 1, since more, so root 2 is more than 1, here what we have is 2 times something more than 1. 2 times something more than 1. What the 2 root, was, what the square root of 2 is, is, it doesn't matter because this is quantitative comparison. We just have to compare it. Nobody's asking us to, nobody's asking us exactly what that quantity is. We simply have to know whether this quantity is equal to, less than, or more than 2. Of course it's more than 2 because we're multiplying 2 by some number which is more than 1. 2 times something more than 1 is going to be more than 2. It's going to be more than 2 and therefore it's more than 2. That's it. The answer is B. The answer is B. Number 10. Number 10. You know what? Listen to me. I'm going to do this problem one more time, but this time I'm not going to show the baby step. 4 plus 2 root 2 versus 2 plus 2 root 2 versus, versus 2 plus 4 root 2. Listen, we're going to do this problem one more time in, in real time as if, as if this were a real exam. We're just going to do it in real time and you see how long it takes. Okay? Here we go. Okay? Here we go. Are you ready? Subtract 2 from both sides. 4 becomes 2, subtract 2 root 2 from both sides, 2 root 2 goes away and this becomes 2 times root 2, 2 times root 2 is more than 2, the answer is B. That's it. Number 10. Question number 10. Question number 10 is a geometry question. We have given something like this and we are told that this is x, this is y, this is x degrees, this is y degrees we are told that this is p degrees and this is q degrees and we are being asked to compare we are being asked to compare number 10 was 48 percent half the people who took the exam had trouble with it we are being asked to compare x plus y in column A versus column B P plus Q. X plus Y versus P plus Q. And that's all there is. I'm going to be quiet now to give you a chance to do it yourself. Pause the video and do it yourself and then unpause it. Here we go. Well, first thing we need to realize is that this angle here, this angle here, whatever it is, it's got to be the same angle as this one. Why? Because these two angles are called vertical angles. Some people refer to these as opposite angles. Same thing. Opposite angles, vertical angles, same thing. 
since these are vertical angles, let's call it letter V. Let's call it V for vertical angles. Are you with me? Now we know that x plus y plus v, we know that x plus y plus v has to equal 180. This has to equal 180 because it's a triangle. Similarly, we know, similarly we know that, uh, similarly we know that p plus q, p plus q plus v also has to equal 180. Wouldn't you agree? Of course it has to equal 180 because it's a triangle, p plus q. P plus Q plus V has to equal 180 because it's a triangle. Since X plus Y plus V equals 180 and P plus Q plus V equals 180, which means that X plus Y, which means that X plus Y plus V has to equal P plus Q plus V. With me? Subtract V from both sides and we are done. X, X plus Y equals P plus Q. Answer is C. Of course, these, the sum of these two angles, of course, the sum of these two angles has to equal the sum of those two angles because these two angles are exactly the same. So once you subtract that angle from 180, once you subtract that angle from 180, whatever the whatever is left over, which is the sum of these two, has to equal to the sum of those two because we're subtracting the same quantity both times. That's all. The reason why half the people miss this question is because these people, which is the whole point of doing this problem from this book here, there is a, there is a reason for it, why we are doing this thing, because these are very, very unordinary questions. These, these are not the sort of questions we, we dealt with in our school years. Quantitative comparison are very different kind of animals. They're different kind of animals because during the exam, a lot of the time, people forget what they're all about. They simply do not understand the bloody point of these questions. The reason why half the people miss this question is because see, they're sitting there and saying, well, how can I figure out what X is? How can I figure out what Y is? They're absolutely right. They're absolutely right. There is no way to figure out the value of X. There is no way to figure out the value of Y. But nobody is asking us to figure out the value of Y or X. We simply have to figure out the value of X plus Y, their sum. And that we can figure out. Their sum has to equal the sum of those two. We don't want to know what their sum is, but it has to equal to those two. That's it. Answer is C. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.